Maybe I am inferior, you know. Maybe I have to to ch change and always, always trying to overact myself and always trying to get attention or do something. Either that, if it wasn't that, I would steal something to get attention. Whatever it took, you know what I mean? The point of it was, I had to get attention because I felt so inferior. And a lot of people carry that around. They don't know it. But they, they don't know that they actually feel second to other people. And I want to tell you something. So what I've learned about us is we're so special. There's no people more special than a hairdresser. And I'll tell you why. Think about it for a second. A client comes in and she's like, oh my God, you know what? Um, I've been married. You know, women are very strange. Guys will never understand them, but anyway, they think they do. But women have these funky things like at seven years, 14 years. They're changing. They evolve. Men don't evolve. They watch TV and the football and the shit, whatever, and have a beer and stuff. That can go on for a hundred years. But women evolve. And like at seven or 14 years, you know, if you don't keep them occupied, they're like, you know what, I need more in my life. So this woman's at home and she's the 14 years, the kids are growing up, and the plumber comes around and he's bending under the sink, cute as a help. And she's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, he comes to the cell and says, listen, Mark, you need to help me. I have, uh, my husband's a good guy, but you know, everything's so damn boring, and this plumber's looking hot, and he, I'm inviting him to a few things I need to fix in the house. <laughs> Whatever, there was nothing, but she's inviting him anyway. <laughs> anyway, what should I do? Now, here's how it looks, okay? She's not asking the psychiatrist. She's asking the, asking the hairdresser, right? Now, here's what it is. I look at her, and I think, she's a real bitch. I can't stand this. So I say, go for it. <laughs> But if she's a good person and I can feel her soul, I'm going to say to her, you're so lucky that you have a good guy. Get over this stuff because you know what? They all end up the same damn way anyway. Right? So stay where you are, you're blessed, and you're gone. You know what she says? Thank you. I just changed her life. And you're not so sad sometimes. You go to a restaurant, they walk in, the husband and wife, and they say, she says, hi, this is my hairdresser. I'm like, what? You're only with that guy because of me. You should be saying, Honey, say thank you. I just, he just said that I'm married. <laughs> you see what I mean? Again, so important. When, when my wife left me, which is, as she realized I had enough money and I was shrinking as I'm getting older, she said, I'm out of here. So I thought I'd go to the psychiatrist, right? So I go to the psychiatrist and I sit down and say, you know, my heart's broken, I'm feeling sad. And she's like, oh, okay. And meantime, when I walk in, she puts a clock on. Clock. Now the time's ticking, right? And every two minutes, she's looking at her watch. I'm thinking, I'm pouring my soul out here. And she's looking at the time like I'm a, some kind of machine or something and not listening. And then I said, please tell me, what should I do? She says, oh, you have so many problems, you have to go back and study your dog and your grandmother and everybody else. I'm like, oh, man. I said, you know what, I'm out of here. Do you know what my mistake was? I should have asked a hairdresser. Right? Right. Right. I should have asked a hairdresser. In two minutes they would have said, you know what, grow up. There's so many desperate women out there, you're not that ugly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I would have felt great right away. Uh, tell me, so tell me who's smarter. That stupid psychiatrist studies for all these years. And, uh, and by the way, if you've ever done the hair, they're more complex than anybody else on the planet. <laughs> the kids are all criminals, they're all. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I just want to tell you, why I'm trying to tell you this is to reassure you how brilliant we are. You know, I think of my lawyer. He's such a sneaky bug. And he goes to school for 15 years to study law, right? So he goes there and they teach him every kind of move how to manipulate people. Yeah. Okay, so what I do, I ask him for, to come for a He charges me 600 bucks an hour. So I ask him to come to the salon to have a haircut. I cut his hair for three hours. <laughs> I can cut his hair in three minutes. I cut his hair for three hours. You know why? I'm asking him questions for three hours, $1,800 worth of questions to ask this idiot, and he doesn't even know I've just called him. <laughs> I'm better than the psychiatrist, I'm better than the damn lawyer. Who are we? Are we unbelievable? Can you get it? Yeah. It's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. And in this economy where everybody's like freaking out, here's where we are. We are the hope in the economy. And I'll tell you why. A woman comes in, or a man, and they say, please cut my hair. They barely have enough money for the, for, for the cut and the color, right? And while they're doing that, they want to be able to get a job, or maintain their job, or look young enough to stay in their job, and they're asking you to do that. Now you lock down, and if you have your heart in it, you will do the best job you can. You know what? You're actually saving her life. You're actually keeping in her job or helping her get a job, right? Now, if you, if you think about that, 
What you just did, she walks out, she feels confident, she says, yeah, I can do it again. I can go out there. What did you just do? In this kind of economy, we can help people stay in the game. Now, is that not amazing? It's truly amazing to think that we have the power to help people feel good, to help people go out there and say, you know what, I can make it, and I can keep my family together. I don't want to turn it into money, but in all due respects, you don't undermine yourself. You don't undermine yourself, because when you do something so special, someone has to pay for it. Do you understand? And you have to live better. I, I, I really have a hard time. I've been in every part of the world and every part of the country. And what saddens me most is when I see hairdressers not living well. When they live in a tiny little apartment, they drive a car that's not safe. And I think, why? You've been born with these two hands. You've been born with creative, you've been born gifted, different to other people, and yet you settle for being second to someone else. This is not right. When you wake up in the morning, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, thank you, I'm blessed, I look great, I'm going to go rock today, and I'm going to earn what I need to earn. And when you have that attitude, it is amazing how you rock. Let, look at me. Do I look six foot and good looking? Give me a bloody break. I'm sleeping. <laughs> But let me tell you one thing, if you drop me in any country in the world, I can't speak the language, you drop me anywhere, within two years I will own that damn city. Why? Is it because I'm better than someone else? We can all cut a damn bar. We can all do an upside. Give me a break. It's that I believe that I can rock. Can you see? And if you believe it's what happens, you do it. Amen. If you can just understand that, that you're special and if you believe in how special you are, it is amazing what you can do. Because it's the difference of someone not believing or feeling insecure or dragging their problems from, from, from way back from their parents, you know, I was run over, thrown out the window. <laughs> 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 so, so we all be. You think we all don't have problems? If we had to bring someone in here and listen to our problems, they would go to the hospital, they'd be sure. <laughs> you understand? The problem is, is you can't live in that. You can't live in that and you can't use it as an excuse why you don't do well. That's not fair. And everybody carries it. So those that keep it in themselves and subconsciously always use it, well, you know, I'm going to go, but quite frankly, uh, it's Monday, oh shit, I don't want to go to work. L let me tell you something. You should be on fire every day and be blessed that you can work. Amen. Do you know how many people are out of jobs? You know, they're a secretary in some place. They're not going to get a job. But we can rock, choose our own hours, and go for it. And let me just tell you something else, just as a matter of interest. We are in a new world right now. The way you worked last year, you cannot work now. You have to better yourself, you have to dress better, you have to be there early, you have to be there late. To be able to just maintain what you have, you better start rocking. There's no gifts out there. Can I have an amen? No. If you understand that, if you just understand that, you can be on fire when everybody else is crying about the damn economy, you rock it. If you're someone down the street, they don't get it, they'll be crying and weeping and carrying on instead of being there and cleaning up their salon and going for it and saying, thank you for my job, and every day getting up and saying, I'm going to rock. You can't believe the power of that. If you get that, I tell you something, you will be different people. Truly, truly. And this whole world is about doom. Read the papers, like, oh my God, it's banks. And banks, just by the way, can you imagine these sneaky buggers? These are the ones that where you're supposed to put your money and they can't even run a business. You know what? I think about it. If I have a business and my business is going down, I have to close the doors because, you know, no one's going to bail me out. The banks, these sneaky guys and the car companies, they run their business into the ground and the government says, oh, you know what? Here's a trillion dollars. Let's go back and make the same funky cars that just buried you before. You know what? It's not fair. I say, that's what I say. In our world, our world, we have to realize that no one cares. We only have to take care of ourselves. Did you know that? I always thought something's going to happen later and my life's going to be safe. The point is, nobody cares. Did you know? It's so sad for me to say that. But nobody cares. The only person that cares is you. And it's interesting that when I grew up, it was like, what's going to happen? You know, you're going to be a problem and all this stuff. What's happened is, I seem to be taking care of the whole damn planet. And everybody's like that in our business. It's amazing how you grow up and all of a sudden you're taking care of your cousin and your kids and your aunt and, the, and everybody on the planet and you're the one that they said wasn't going to do something with your life. What the hell is that? You know what's interesting to me now? Start to learn to take care of yourself. 
Start to learn that you're important, that you do need a vacation, and that you need to take care of yourself. It's not just about everybody else. The more you take care of everybody, the more they're bloody expected. Did you know that? And the day, the day you don't want to do it, they get pissed off. Yeah. Isn't that trippy? And I'm yeah. thinking, I've just given you everything I've got, and now you're mad because I don't have any more. What the hell is going on? Yeah. Do you see that? Stop it. Stop it. And start thinking of who you are. Start to say, I am special. You know, I'm going to keep a little bit of money, because by the time you get to give that one and that one and that, you've got nothing for your damn self. Guys, listen to me. You're important, and you need to behave important, and you need to keep something for yourself. And you need to take a vacation, and you need to know you're special. If you behave special, you'll be special. Amen. If you behave second, and you always behave in fear, and you're always going to give everybody, they'll just ride you until you're dead. Do you know that? So can I have an amen on that? Amen! amen. <laughs> Please hear me, you know why? I'm in so many countries, I don't know where the hell I am. There's only one thing I realize <laughs> that with hairdressers, it's the only thing I know and it's the only thing I love. But I have a responsibility to that. And my responsibility is, look, we can't save everybody else, but we can watch over each other. We can watch that we're going to be okay in the planet. And that's my thing, is to go out to remind you that you are absolutely special, that you created, you've been given gifts that are beyond thinking, and that you've got to understand that that's important, and you can't be second. You know, if someone built a house up on a hill, I used to think to myself, I'm going to build a house on top of theirs or above theirs. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to beat them. No, why? Why shouldn't we? Why should we be at the bottom of the hill? I can't stand that. We're the most gifted people on the planet. We should be able to live like that. See? Because it's not fair. These people, a millionaire, do you know a millionaire? Most of them are total idiots. Do you know that? <laughs> they have their luck. And you know what else what they had? They sort of believed their own bull. Do you know that? They got a system going, they borrowed a bit of money, they bought in a product, and the next thing they're making a lot of money. We have talent beyond them. And we should be sitting in the same place as them. We just have to know how to do it. And it's very simple. Believe in yourself, raise the capital, make a story about it, and go rock. Mm. That's how it works. Honest to God, I, I can tell you now. I arrived with, four, what, $4,000 in this country? You guys know, I used to own a company called Carlton. I turned that into 50 or 40 something salons doing, I don't know, 40 million dollars. From what? From 4,000? Then I started coming sexy hair, turned that into 60 million. From what? It's only because I believe. Can you see how simple? It's not because I've got some damn magic. It's not because I'm so good looking. Give me a break. If I'm somewhere, they don't even see me, except because they're ridiculing me because I look so damn stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the point of it is, if, if one little guy can do it, why can't the whole planet do it? And, and whether you're working behind the chair, if you're working behind the chair and you're doing 600 or you're doing $1,000, why aren't you doing two? Why aren't you pushing it and make the max out of it that you can? Why? See? And here's another thing. The economy is funky, right? And people are going to be like saying, oh, I'm going to lose my house and so on. I hate that and I'm sad for that. On the other side, if you haven't bought property, what a good time to buy. Yeah. Do you understand? So while you're crying, this is how I look at it. If you've got a house and the bank wants to take it back, give the bloody house back. Say, you know, take the damn thing, it's crap anyway, then I'm going to go buy another one. <laughs> because I'm going to get it cheaper than the one that I have all the money on. Do you see that? Take it, I'll get another one. What do I care? Then you go pick up a deal and the bank has this one that you owe all the money on. <laughs> you understand? So you got to be smart. They want to mess with you, you mess right back with them. You see? Very, very, very This is a time, this is a time to grow, it's a time to rock. Just to give you one more thing, when our 1990, the interest rate was, was 21%, that means that, or 24%, that means if I borrowed $100,000, I had to give them 24000 only on interest. Now think about that, that only left me 76000 to build my business. Think about that. So what I did was, when it was so bad, I went to the mall and I wanted to get the, a location. Now, you know, I'm like, I want to be in the mall. I'm like, okay, no problem. You go down here, you go down there, and the hairdresser's in the back. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to be right here next to Nordstrom and Starbucks on the Nordstrom plug where the makeup is, right on the corner. They're like, you can forget about it. I'm like, okay, keep it. There was no one coming in anyway. The economy was so bad that no one was taking the premises. So then he said, okay, you can take it. I said, okay, and I want you to build the store. He's like, are you joking? <laughs> yeah. It's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He's like, I'm not I said, okay. He said, Alright, I'll build it. So now while I'm in a run, I said to him, and I want six months free rent. He's like, Are you crazy? I'm like, No, you can keep it. Gives me six months rent. Why did that happen? 
It was economy with Sharif. You see that? And because it was lousy, I could get everything I wanted. So if the economy is lousy now, what do you do? You get everything you need. See it? Amen? Yes. You see what I'm saying, guys? Take advantage. When people are crying, it's a time to take advantage. Because what goes down must come up. Yeah. Can I hear that? What goes down must come? Yeah. Uh, you know why? And when it comes up, you're in the best position because you took advantage while everybody was crying. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. Do you see it? Do you think I should cut from here? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can. <laughs> <laughs>